Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heaven and King. O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may obtain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial Psalm is, O God, let all your nations praise you. O God, let all your nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us, May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all your nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult because you rule the people's inequity. The nations on the earth you guide. O oh God, let all your nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth feel, fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are, re are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. given a great model how to plead to our Lord. We're given a model of how to speak with our Lord. This, boss, this gospel gives us a great lesson in our own journey with God. The great faith of the Canaanite woman is justly extolled. She believes him to be God, whom she calls Lord, and a man whom she styles the son of David. She lays no stress upon her own merits, but supplicates for the mercy of God. Neither does she say, have mercy on my daughter, but have mercy on me. To move him to compassion, she lays all her grief and sorrow before him in these afflicting words. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Our observation of these details given to us, hopefully may be of use. In the world we live in today, often we take it to heart that what we do for work, the field that we are in, what school we graduated from, what degree we have, indeed says, so we think, what we are worth and how important we are to the world. When we go to ask for things at work or between friends and don't get our way, we resort to where we went to school, what degree we have, who taught us, and so forth. These are all human merits that we somehow wear like a badge upon our soul or on our body. These merits that we are proud of become our currency and in a sense a means to say step aside, give me what I want. But the woman here puts all that aside. She inherently understands that God is before her. The accomplishments and reputable sources of our social cultural framework falls by the wayside. She gets it. She, did, she doesn't bring these other things up. She pours out her whole person, her heart with words to the Lord. That's something. Men, take note. Enough with the ego and your accomplishments. Enough with what car you drive, what iPhone you have, the boat you're going to purchase, and the places you're going to visit. Damper down on those issues. Let's instead learn from the scene that the Lord reveals to us today. The merits and badges of human accomplishment are foregone before God in a woman's plea. This particular soul gets it right. Let's learn from her. What we hear is a candid soul speaking with our Lord. This gospel is such a great image and reminder, especially for you fathers. You are to lead your household to prayer. You are to summon the family to come before God, honoring the first and third commandment. You are to teach your children to our Father, to help Mary, but most especially how to pray to God. Teach them how to say grace and how to end meals with the prayer of thanksgiving. 
Our brothers, this is our job. Let's step up our game. Look at the gospel a little closer with respect to the exchange of the woman and our Lord. Revelation says, but Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. That is what we heard. But it must be not supposed that our Savior refused to hear the woman through any contempt, but only to show that his mission was in the first instance to the Jews, or in more appropriation, to induce her to ask with greater earnestness, so as to deserve more ample assistance. The woman's nationality in this gospel is important for us to note, theologically, because nationality in Jesus' day meant a lot. The woman is identified as a Canaanite. In Jesus' time, Gentiles from this area were known as Syrophoenicians. The term Canaanite had not been used for centuries. It would be like describing a person from Great Britain as an Anglo-Saxon or a Celt. Terms like these are obsolete. But the word Canaanite has a theological overtone. The Canaanites were those who lived in the Promised Land prior to the arrival of the Israelites. The Canaanites worshipped idols and thus were a threat to God's people. The Canaanites did follow the first commandment of you shall have no other gods. Canaanites were considered the enemies of God's people. So the context of the woman in today's gospel is that she is a total outsider, unworthy of God's grace. This is the undertone of the woman's conversation with Jesus. And why the disciples want nothing to do with her? But look, Here's the interesting part. Jesus does not send her away. First he is silent. Then he says, in essence, I come to do homage to the Jews, not to anything pertaining to your class. Sounds pretty harsh. But then I think we've all been there. We prayed and encountered the silence of God. We found our prayer requests ignored and even seen signs that the prayers of others are already, be already being answered. What's intriguing about this woman is that she does not take no for an answer. She hangs on in faith, knowing that her only hope is the one who is Lord and Son of David. And Jesus cites her faith as a reason for finally granting her request. Let us admire not only the greatness of her faith, but likewise the profoundness of her humility. For when our Savior called the Jews children, so far from being envious of another's praise, she readily answers. When Christ likened her to a dog, she readily acknowledges the meanness of her condition. Jesus refuses at first to listen to her petition, but instructs us with what faith, humility, and perseverance we ought to pray to make us, his servants, more sensible of his mercy and more eager to obtain it. He often appears to pay no attention to our prayers until he has exercised in us the virtues of humility and patience. Ask, and you shall receive. Knock, and it will be open to you. Jesus says to the woman, let it be done, along with some subsequent words following that. This adage of let it be done is a throwback to Genesis. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Here Jesus says, let it be done, and so forth. And her daughter was healed that hour. So powerful with God is earnest in fervent prayer. We want to take notice and observe how the woman herself had contributed not a little to her father's healing, daughter's healing. And therefore Christ said not unto her, let thy daughter be healed, but, he says, let it be done for you as you wish. This goes to show that she had spoken in sincerity and that her words were not words of flattery, but of abundant faith. The Canaanite was long in her obtaining was long in her obtaining her request, and only prevailed by her insistence. As an outsider, this woman showed more faith than the descendants of Abraham, of which Jesus was sent to gather. Today's gospel lends us leads us inward to consider our own faith. Our Lord challenges us to pursue Him, despite what the others say of us. Yes, we are unworthy and our outsiders. The holy ones around us laugh at us. They show us away because we are not in the clique. Yep, the list goes on on the rap sheet people have on us. They know our person, 
our family history, where we're from, and all hell that is tied to our name. So true, is it not? People got us pegged. The Canaanite woman has nowhere to hide from, that, from the ridicule, nor do we. We are strengthened, though, by the woman. We are reminded that God favors the humble, the patient, and the persistent. With complete, complete utter frankness and abundant faith, the door will be answered for us. Let this be our lesson. Now let's turn to behold the Lord in the Eucharist in a manner that we just recently heard. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, come substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for greater faith and trust that God truly hears and answers our prayers. That we may see the church and her sacraments are the greatest source of grace and faith, and give Christ homage in his Eucharistic presence. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all peoples may be receptive to the good news of Jesus Christ and be converted to him, especially in places where Christianity is suppressed or illegal. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That families, that families experiencing strife may be healed by Christ to end division and repair broken relationships. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray through the intercession of St. Hedwig for our parish faith formation programs and our school as we prepare to teach the faith to our children. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May Christ have mercy on the sick and those troubled by emotional or spiritual ills, especially. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will grant life from the dead for those we mourn, especially. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, help us to observe what is right and do what is just, and so be admitted to your holy mountain through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, O God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and mighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, of which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. Special announcement for those uh, who want to come up to receive communion to drop off your donation to the church in one of the baskets. Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Your Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made by the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit mind to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as as the church and so in a company of choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim holy, 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 if you're able to kneel please kneel you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of, recon of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Kevin our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own.
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, be able to kneel, please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life, but I will say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be given to one thou. Let's pray. Be partakers of Christ through these sacraments. We humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may, we may merit also to be co heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Uh, that long announcement, well, half page or so, bear with me. Next weekend, we'll be asking for a special second collection. Besides your regular offering for your parish, We'll be asking your generous help for the missionary work of the church. Every summer, we have had a guest speaker at our parish to, to ask your help for a specific mission. Because of the pandemic and travel restrictions, we do not have the usual missionary cooperative weekend. This will cause distress for missionaries who rely on our generosity. Last summer, you, you may remember, we had a priest from Africa appealing for his African Children's Fund. We were very generous in response and our parish school continues to maintain our relationship with them. This year there is no missionary, but Father Chris and Father Scott will appeal on their behalf, and their gift will be sent through the Diocese of Orange Mission Office to various missions who have asked for our help. I also want to thank our Chris and Sarah and all the sacristans who have uh, really been here with, with us every week so far, setting things up, making the music sounds right so you can hear us, and all the logistics before and after Mass. So thank you, Chris and Sarah, and all this. <laughs> the Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
Michael. The archangel, defend us in battle. Be our, our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. 